is this a problem? I, I, I want to just talk to you with, with with this particular subject because I'm, I'm guessing you said about Rocha having the same problem, I, and I'm guessing there's guys in Ateneo or FEU or these other schools that are also experiencing this, the, the, the same the same issues. How do you think it's it's potentially stunted the development of players in your situation? And then do you feel it has also impacted on, on a broader scale, say, for example, at the SEA Games level? I know it has impacted um, very much. Um, I've been thinking about it for the longest time, and I understand um, where um, the conflict um, resides or where the, where the problem resides. It's actually um, the culture of um, our of the Philippines, wherein um, the only way to get a good job here in the Philippines is, to, is a, getting a college degree. Welcome to another edition of Across the Line. On today's episode, we have Harvey Gayoso. Uh, Harvey talks about his decision to join the professional ranks, as well as his time with the Azcals and his impressive collegiate career at Ateneo. Uh, if you like this episode, please share it with your friends, uh, like and review on any of our platforms. Um, like us on Facebook, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also download these episodes on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Hello and welcome to another edition of Across the Line with me, Chris Greatwich. Uh, I'm riding solo today. Uh, Jing Hamlang is currently in Myanmar with the Kaya First team. Uh, but alongside me in the studio today, I have got one of the Philippines' hottest <laughs> young prospects in Harvey Gayoso. <laughs> Hi, Coach, Harvey. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, thank you for coming on the show. We've been trying to get you on for a long time. I've been busy. <laughs> Very busy. Very busy. Uh, yeah. Happy birthday, by the way. Oh, thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Turned 23 a couple of days ago. Yeah. And um, we've already had the pleasure of one of your family members. Yes. Being it's on the show. Peter Alvin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so for everyone who doesn't know the full story, Alvin Acampo is mm -hmm. your... Uncle. Famous uncle. Yes. Um, can I be, Before we start the interview, I, I mm -hmm. want to know something about this dynamic. Okay. Right. Why did you not go and play for your uncle? Because... Um, one side of my family um, came from Ateneo, so nah, the decision okay. was really basically from um, either Ateneo or La Salle, and because um, I was offered the scholarship for both. Yeah. Um, my father's dream for me was to graduate in his alma mater, which is Ateneo. Okay. So that's basically why I was more directed to that yeah. side of the rivalry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How did Alvin take that news when he uh, he found out you're going to go to Ateneo? Um, he respected it. Did I mean, he? Yeah. He, I think. Um, after um, making my decision, it became a challenge for him instead. Like, oh, you know, um, he's, I'm going to try to make him regret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. okay, okay, good. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, thank you for having um, me. You've really been the talk of the town in the last week or so. Um, you've made an announcement. Yeah. I said LeBron James style <laughs> off, 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 <laughs> off mic. Um, that you've made the decision that you would like to pursue a professional football career yes. and you're going to forego your final year of eligibility yes. in, in college. Yes. Um, it made the headlines. A lot of people wrote a lot of things about that decision. Yeah. Um, just talk us through what was the rationale behind that decision and why you chose to do that this time around. Yeah. Actually, um, well, first of all, after sending the, um, sending the farewell message, um, it, I was surprised by a lot of the reactions. It was all positive, how everybody actually, um, um, they were supporting me in my mm. decision. So it was a good reaction that I got. And um, basically that that decision for me was, um, um, it was a tough one. It was a difficult decision to make because um, I've given so much for the Ateneo. Um, but at the same time, looking at my personal career, um, just like we were talking about a while ago, um, there were a lot of my batchmates who were no longer here in the country and um, pursuing um, their own um, passions for football in their um, respective careers. So um, it was a decision I had to make. And um, from the very beginning, after, my, after, after a championship, um, I was very open to um, any offer that may come. Um, of course, I was still set towards playing in the UAAP, but I was, um, my, my, I was open doors to whichever offer. And um, after the SEA Games, there was an... Um, a, a really good opportunity um, after talking to Coach Scott um, and the coaching staff of the SEA Games. And, um, and that's when I realized that I had to take my opportunity. I had to take the chance. Sure. So, yeah, just for the listeners and the viewers aware, we, we were talking off mic before we started this yeah. interview. Um, I first met you when you were a young kid and 14, maybe 15 playing for MSA. And a lot of those kids from that batch, from your batch, yeah. have gone on to pursue 
avenues abroad. So yes. Marco Casombre would be one. Yeah. Um, we've just recently come back to the Philippines, yeah. but obviously played in, out in, in Thailand yes. uh, last year. Uh, Mark Winhoffo is in the States, as is Rocky Plaza, yeah. Shandon Vergara. Yeah. So you've seen a lot of your batch mates yeah. go on to, to, to pursue their careers yes. um, outside. You obviously chose to, to stay yeah. in the Philippines, yeah. but now have made the decision yeah. that you would like to pursue that pro um, avenue. Yes. What what was the sort of the the tipping point for you? What what was it really that made you decide? Look, if I if I go another year in 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 the UAP, yeah. it's going to be another year wasted for me. Mm -hmm. So so why now? Why did you opt to pursue it at this particular moment in time? Um, after after shivering four years, um, I never found it um, as a waste. Um, particularly to be um, to be playing in the UAP. Mm. Um, However, I saw the disparity in the SEA Games um, coming from a college player competing with um, players, uh, international players who play pro. I saw the disparity and I saw the big difference where I was competing with guys younger who were actually more skillful than me. So um, that was a real big opener for me. Mm. Um, that was basically what pushed me towards um, settling um, settling my, my Ateneo career and mm. starting to push for... Um, an international professional career. What did you notice in terms of the disparity? Because obviously you're, you're you, you think you're playing left back for most of the yes. uh, for the sea games. So obviously yes. a change of position to what you were accustomed to yes. with Ateneo. Um, where did you see the deficiencies in your game? Where did you see the disparity between you and some of? Uh, I'm assuming teammates and yeah. maybe opponents also. Yes. What, what what was it in particular that you saw as a disparity? I think it was the pace of the game, the okay. way um, the ball, mo the the movement of the ball. Um, it's it's different when you're playing against college players. Yeah. Um, you have more time. You can be more relaxed. There's no moment for rest here. Um, I mean, when when talking about the um, playing against pros, um, it. Just the IQ and all the high, it's just the higher level, the way that I observed it and the way that I felt. Um, of course, um, I was still trusted to play um, in the starting 11, but um, I knew that I was not um, as confident in my game as when I'm playing in the college mm. level. Okay. Just the way I felt it. Yeah. So, but based on that experience, yeah. so that, like, like you said, you, you, you had peers in the team colleagues of yours who are playing at, at the professional level yeah. where do you see improvements in your game that initially have happened through being alongside these yes. players and, and in the future where do you see developments in your game to hopefully propel you from maybe not just a development squad or another yeah. 22 team into the full national team yeah. um, with the help of the coaches who have actually been observing my, uh, my game um, we're able to see a lot of um, holes for improvement for me, for example, my aggressiveness when it comes to defending. Mm. Um, that was a big problem that I had, which almost got me cut from the SEA Games team. And um, a lot of the coaches, a lot of the local coaches who have actually observed me um, throughout my playing career um, have fought for me, like Coach Ernie. And um, I was given another opportunity and that's what, um, what I, I decided to work on. So um, for me, for me there's, a, there's a lot more that I can work on, but at the same time, um, my first priority is actually working on my aggressiveness, aggressiveness when it comes to defense. Yeah. So how did you find that transition? I'm, I, I never really spoke. We spoke a little bit in, in the interview yeah. uh, that Jing and I conducted about the SEA Games mm -hmm. on, on this podcast. Mm -hmm. and we were saying that it was quite an interesting switch. shift. Yeah, yeah, switch, exactly. <laughs> from, you know, you as we know, you as a predominantly attacking player. Yes. You, obviously, your goal scoring record speaks for itself. Um, how did you find that switch from... Um, playing in an attacking position to being in a defensive line? Well, definitely, um, um, it was difficult for me to, to be able to play as natural as I could. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm in front, um, you give me the ball and I know what to do. It's, it's, like, um, it's, it's, like, um, it's no longer a second thought to me. Uh, but when I was playing in the back, especially because it was my first time playing um, um, a competitive, competitively, I used to play for fun, you know, just yeah, like, yeah. hey, let's go play in defense and all that. But then... To play competitively, I had uh, it wasn't natural to me. I had to think about what I was supposed to do. I had to think about the second move that I was going to make. And um, it was a challenge for me, of course. I knew that football um, football um, grows and fo football becomes more modern every single time. So um, being able to learn a new position, being able to adjust and to play, um, I think it's a really good um, thing to have in my back pocket that yeah. I, I'm actually more than just a, an offensive player. Yeah. 
And what was the rationale? Did the coaches explain to you? I'm assuming they would, would have had to. Yeah. Because, because it's something that you haven't played yeah. before. Um, did they explain to you the rationale behind the decision? And what did they think you could bring to the table in, in a more sort of defensive position? I think it was more of the speed that yeah. I had. Um, so... I know in our first game, the wingers had, the, the Cambodia's wingers were very fast. And um, I think that's what they needed um, in the wings, right. just to defend those long balls to, the, to their wingers. So yeah. I think that's why they, they put me there. Okay. <laughs> ult ultimately, uh, this, is, this is the question I would like to ask you now, is okay. do you see yourself playing in that position long term? Or do you just see it as an opportunity for you to learn as a player, yeah. to grow and develop a new skill set? But the, ultimately, would you prefer to play in a more attacking position moving forward? Um, my personal opinion, yes, I'd prefer to play up top. But, yeah. But yeah, that I think this is an opportunity for me to grow as a player, to to be more professional and to to actually learn from from a different perspective in the field. Yeah, I I, I think that too. Like I look at it, you know, from from my own perspective as from as a player, I started off as a striker when yeah. I was eight, nine, ten years old, yeah. just scoring goals all the time. I had no interest in, yeah. in defending. Yeah. And then as you go through your sort of development through, mm -hmm. through my teenage years played a lot at left back yeah left wing back yeah. that was actually my position for a long time <laughs> not left footed my left foot's not particularly good but i played there through uh, the necessity of the coach really needing a left-sided player so mm -hmm. i just played there i then moved into a more central position quite late actually i mm -hmm. always saw myself as an attacking midfield player yeah. but i never really had that that avenue until i i moved to america so i would have mm -hmm. been 19 at the time yeah. so i went through you know basically eight to ten years of playing, playing different, positions, different positions but obviously at the time i was frustrated because i thought no, i should be playing in a more central position mm -hmm. i feel like I, I can bring my attacking nature in, in a more pivotal role because sometimes you can be a little bit isolated out yeah. on the wing um and then i played there for about six or seven years before i revert to more defensive midfielder yeah. role yeah. and when i tell some of my peers who I played with when I was younger. I played defensive midfield now. They wouldn't believe. Hey, just laugh at me. Like, <laughs> you can't defend, you can't tackle, you know. Like, but then, you know, when you explain some of the attributes that, that I have, I was like, okay, kind of makes sense. Yeah. Same with you. Like, at first I was like, that's a bit of an obscure decision. Mm -hmm. But when you temper that with, okay, this is the scouting report, this is something that we're lacking as a team, yeah. the opponents have, a, you know, specific strengths in, in certain areas, and yeah. you're someone who can neutralize that yeah. threat. I think then, then ultimately, um, it was a decision that was made for the betterment of the team. Yes. I think it's testament to you also that you, I think there was an, even an interview that went out that you publicly said, look, I'm willing to go and play anywhere. Yeah. As long as it's the right thing for the team. That was actually what I was thinking rather than sitting out and not being able to help the team. Um, I'll take the challenge and just do what I have to do yeah. inside the field. Which is great. And, and you, you, people have always spoke, spoken glowingly about your attitude and, you know, you've. Thank you. Um, I think that, that was testament to that. Get that with that specific example. So, um, no fair play to you because I know a lot <laughs> of people would be like, "No, thank you. I'm not. I, I don't want to take that." Yeah. Because you've obviously you built up a really good reputation for yourself at the UAP level. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but fair play for you for, for for taking on that challenge. So now you're you've made a decision, right? We said yeah. LeBron James style. You've made the decision. <laughs> yeah. um, the plan is up to play in the development squad. Yes, with the under twenty threes. Twenty threes is that is that correct? With some of the older guys mixed in. Yeah, mixed in. And what are your plans and aspirations with that group? Um, hopefully, it's to develop me to be able to adjust to the professional football um, well, playing style, and um, to be able to get opportunities abroad. Yeah, yeah. That's really the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. So, it, I mean, you would have seen some of your peers. Like I said, like Marco, for example, yeah. go abroad. You would have seen Amani Aguinaldo, for yes, example, yes. Um, gone on to, to, to play at, to Malaysia. Play abroad. In, in Malaysia, yeah. uh, in Thailand now. I mean, if we'd had this conversation maybe two or three years ago, it, you probably would have thought, Harvey's talking pie in the sky. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's a pipe dream. It's, it's not really feasible. But, yeah. you know, especially with the connections that the coaching staff have. Yes, yes. With the, the, the seemingly conveyor belt of players that yeah. are coming from the Philippines yes. in, into Southeast Asian clubs. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's a viable option. Yes. So you're saying to me that this is something that is a, is a plan for you yes. moving forward. Yes. And in terms of that progression, like, I mean, you've seen the, the, the level of Southeast Asia now. Mm -hmm. How far away do you think you are from being able to step into that breach and being able to, able to compete at that level? I have no idea. I'll put you on the spot here <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
so far I think my progress has been good. Yeah. But of course I still lack um, um the exposure to playing against professional guys. Yeah. Uh, I know it's a different level and it's a it's a higher level than what I'm used to. So yeah. um it's really um, a matter of um how much I want to um, learn from it and how much I want to develop right now. Um, but at the moment, I, I really can't answer that yeah, question. Okay. I, I feel like I can compete if yeah. I wanted to compete, but yeah, I, I really have to want it from now. And I, I really do. I, 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 really, I really push to um, working harder every training just to prepare myself for what may come hopefully soon enough. Does it, it must give you confidence though when you see people from your batch, people from similar backgrounds, obviously yes. like Amani coming through the yes. UAP, yeah, UAP system. It inspires me a lot. It actually. must be inspiring. Yes. That's the word I'm looking for. Yes. So hopefully moving forward, and we'll, and we'll come on to that later because I, I don't want to go too much into your okay. aspirations. <laughs> okay. we're, we're, that's something I would like to sort of talk about later okay. on, but it, it must give you a lot of confidence yeah. knowing that other people are going out there and, yes, and, and applying their trade abroad, which, yeah. which wasn't really a thing yeah. you know, two or three years ago. Exactly. But I've known you for a while. I want to change gears a little bit because I've known you for a while and you've, you've been on my radar since, I want to say 14 years old when I saw mm -hmm. you Play as this tall, skinny striker, at M <laughs> MS Little MSA. Yeah, MSA. Yeah, <laughs> would win. Uh, we had some really good battles, like you said. Rocky was in our Kaya team, yeah. and that, that was for me probably the golden period of youth football. Yeah. That age group that was, was a, strong. That was a fun competition. Really to have. strong. Do you remember? What do you remember from those UFL youth? I days? remember finals game against Kaya where we went to penalty shootout. Yeah, yeah that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. We, we packed Emperor Stadium. It was massive, wasn't it? It was. A couple of thousand people probably there <laughs> watching. It was crazy and everybody was just there cheering on for um, for Kai and for yeah. MSA. Yeah. And it was a it was a bitter rivalry, the, the, yeah. those teams. Yeah. And it was a, it was just fun because I had a lot of friends from Nino is my best friend. Yeah. And he, he's plays, he plays for Ateneo now yeah. and Sam Lim who also plays for Ateneo. So yeah. they're all there. And it was just fun. Yeah, great days. Yeah. I, I, I want to sort of bring it back but even before that because mm -hmm. I don't really know that's, that side of your story. Yeah. I... I, I no kind of 14 onwards because like you said we uh, nina herrera who you just mentioned mm -hmm. he was at the academy with us he's mm -hmm. now teammates with you at, at ateneo his father is obviously heavily involved with, yes. with the school and and, and he's with, with with the club but i don't really know much about your story as a okay. as a youngster yeah, yeah. I, I don't really know how that and i'm always interested to find out because uh, a lot of the guests that we have on the show mm -hmm. they talk about their experiences from europe what it was like growing yes. up in europe but yes. there's only a few kids um, experiences that they've had here, here in, in yes. Philippines have, have really yeah. been um, talked about. So, how was it for you growing up in in the system here in the Philippines? Where, where did you start playing football okay. for the first so, time? So, for my, my my very first um, football team was Juventud. It was in Southridge, uh, Ridge Field. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So that's where I started, and then um, after playing for for Ridge Field for some time. Um, Coach Candice, we met Coach Candice and Coach <laughs> Avery for Football Fanatics, and yeah. they took me in. And um, at first, I was actually supposed to stop because uh, we couldn't pay for the training sessions anymore. But Coach Candice was the one who actually saw potential and told um, mom that um, I can still train with, with okay. Football Fanatics. So yeah. I continued on as the one of their, I think, probably their pioneer scholars yeah. in the club. Yes. And how old were you at this point? Grade two, grade one. Six, I don't know six, how old. Six, seven, yeah. something like that? Yeah, I started at the age of four. Right. Yeah. So I was in kindergarten. I was playing um, with the grade school team, and then I moved into um, football fanatics at, at around that age. And yeah. I I, com I continued to play with them until around ten, eleven. Okay. And then were you always talented as a young kid compared to your the other kids around? I I I I think I've earned a few awards, but yeah. I can't remember how I was playing. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember my first ask. Um, I remember most of the tournaments that I went to, I'd come home by lunchtime. So that was my experience. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a long time does, before. Does that mean you came home before, before lunchtime because you got knocked out? Yes. You, got beat? yes. <laughs> yeah. you know, those like, for example, yeah. Alaska Cup, where in, by lunchtime you're already going home instead of waiting for your semifinals. Or yeah. The, yeah. So that was my experience growing up. So most of the time, um, I'd, I'd, I'd be coming home early from, <laughs> from yeah. tournaments. I wouldn't really be spending the entire day because back then it was all seven aside. There yeah, wasn't really yeah. 11 aside nah. games for my age. Yeah, but, of course. But now, of course, there there are, right? How did you compare to some of those other guys we mentioned, like the, the likes of Rocky, Nino? Do you remember those from when they were young? I remember playing against Nino in high school. Yeah, okay. But, but, and, and, of course, the youth football uh, tournaments, but that was pretty much it. I, I don't remember a lot of the guys that I played. I remember playing against Matthew, p with and against Matthew in MS... Uh, um, Makati football Custodia? MFS. Yes, yeah, Makati yeah, Custodia. Yeah, okay. In MFS, um, 
we used to be um, appointed as like rivals, rivals before, yeah, yeah, in the okay. youth in the youth um, football world. <laughs> so that was pretty fun. To, so I um, after football fanatics playing in a lot of tournaments, I was um, scouted by a lot of other clubs like um, AFC. I played for AFC. Um, Coach Tomas Lozano put yep. me in, or AFS, AFS, I yeah. think. Alabang Football School. Yeah, like and then I also played for MF, MFS, and then um, I played for Union FC for a while. Um, Who's in charge of that program? Coach Ai. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Ai was the one who recruited me, and then um, I played for Don Bosco also, my my school in grade school. Um, I was um, the first ever grade school student to play for the high school team. Okay. Yes. And then um, I received a scholarship from La Salle. Right. I received a scholarship from Ateneo, and then uh, that's when I decided to go to um, Ateneo. So you you were at Don Bosco all the way through high school, grade school, grade school. Where did you go to high school? Ateneo. You went to Ateneo. Yes. Okay. So that and then that's when you made the yes the, the transition. My first ever um, eleven aside tournament was um, against La Salle Green Hills in my first year high school. Okay. Up until that, never played. Never played. Eleven aside. Yes. Okay. At what point did you feel? Because obviously, you, you sport, sport kind of runs in the in the family. Yes. Isn't it? So yes. Good, you, tell, tell tell us a little bit about some of your famous illustrious family members. Okay. So my from my father's side, my 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 dad's dad, so my Lolo, he used to play basketball. Yeah. And then his two sons, which is which are my dad and Tito Mike, <laughs> played basketball for the Ateneo. Yeah. And then my mother's side. Um, my mom's dad is the uh, Mr. Basketball and Mr. Football of yeah. the Philippines. Yeah. And then um, Tito Alvin and Tito Teo, who played for the... Well, Tito Alvin played for the Ascals, yeah. and then Tito Teo played for the Futsal National Yes, team. yeah. Yes, and then me. <laughs> and then you. So you're, yes. you're, you're part of a long, illustrious line of sporting... Yes, from both sides. From both sides, Yes. right? Um, so the point I'm trying to get to is, with that in the blood with mm-hmm. that in in the genes there must have been a little bit of pressure to be another yeah you know another okay. an, an, another sporting uh-huh. uh prodigy i guess um growing up or was or was it the case or were they quite hands off and said you know we just let you do your thing let you have fun and enjoy it and see where it takes us oh they were they were there from um from the very beginning uh, my family was there from the very beginning so every step of the way um they've been supporting me and all but then um they didn't put m- as much pressure. No. You no, know, I didn't feel the pressure from my family uh, when it came to comparisons or anything. In fact, um, it was more of um, something that I looked up to, knowing that all, um, all these um, family members of mine have achieved so much. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's something that also pushed me towards um, excelling or pushed me towards doing better or um, working harder yeah. um, to being um, what I aspire to be and where I am now. Yeah, that's great because that that's also something we talked a lot about on this mm-hmm. podcast is young kids when they have, they show signs of talent, mm-hmm. when they show signs of, okay, they're pretty good. Mm-hmm. They, they, they might be able to do something with, with the sport. Um, what I've noticed in this youth space is that there's a tendency to be overbearing, mm-hmm. either as parents mm-hmm. or as coaches, yeah. to really try to push them down that path yeah but i think if you if you really want to succeed in any, anything mm-hmm. it, there needs to be an intrinsic motivation there yeah. you need to really want it yes uh, because ultimately if it's the desire of the, of the father or yeah. the mother or, or someone else or yeah. someone else it's going to fall flat somewhere yes. down the line definitely you know um so it's interesting that you said that that, that, that your family members didn't put too much pressure no. on you not really yeah i know alvin would speak a little bit he would give you a little tidbits little sprinklings oh, yeah. of uh of, of advice yes he, he, he would say advice yeah. because obviously he was a knowledgeable yes um member of your family yes. you know he, he played national team he'd yes. already, he's already in in a coaching community mm-hmm. how, how influential was he in in your sort of development growing up oh he's always been there for me um my, my tito would never put rivalry first it would always be family first mm-hmm. so when it came to um criticism and when it came to um, the problems that I had with with my game, he'd always be there to help me, no matter. Um, I remember this one time, um, a few a few hours before a game against La Salle, um, he'd also talk to me about stuff that I can improve on. 
doesn't make sense. <laughs> what's, Alvin, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't just him. It was Coach Hans also. They were just like, we were talking together and we were like, oh, this is... I think he looked more on my development as a player. Yeah. It wasn't really um, something... It was, not, it was never beyond that. It was just really him being able to give me the best opportunity to improve my game. Do you trust him? Of course I do. Do you? He's my family. No, I don't reckon. I reckon he, t- <laughs> I reckon he told you to do something and he already, had the, he already had the game plan in his head. No, I, absolutely not. That's a lie. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. But he, what, one thing I like about Alvin is what you said there is something that maybe 1% of coaches would do. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yes, like yes. It, it, The fact that he's, he's willing to look out for you. Yes. Even though it might cost his team, yeah. even though it might cost not his job, he's, he's, yeah. I think he's pretty secure, but yeah. you know, it, it, it might affect him in terms of points, mm-hmm. or it might affect, you know, he's always looking to try to develop yes. you or, Me, or yeah. other players mm-hmm. also. I think he, he has that sort of mindset. If, mm-hmm. if he feels as though it's going to improve that, yes. that individual. And um, there needs to be more people like that in, in our game. You know, I, I've spoken glowingly about your uncle. I think he's, he's, a lov- he's a lovely guy. But I think in order for everyone to improve and in order for the game to progress, these types of interactions have to mm-hmm. take place yeah. and the people need to be less sort of insecure yeah. about their own yeah. situation and just think about it from a holistic standpoint. There's no selfishness. There's no selfishness at all. Yeah. And I think that, that little story there really summarizes summarizes him. Yes. And I don't like talking too glowingly about your uncle because <laughs> he came on the show and spoke for an hour and a half. Um, but, you know, that, that just to highlight that, I think yeah. that's really, really important because... There isn't enough of that in the coaching community. Yeah. There isn't enough of that in, in the football community in the yeah. Philippines. A lot of it is is selfish. Like and favoritism and all that. Nepotism. Yeah. It, there's a, there's a lot of that in this, in 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 the football game here, and I think for him to show that kind of compassion in 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 that type of situation and in the story that you told, I think that that's that's a really refreshing yeah. outlook for him to have. So props to you, Alvin. You're you're a, you're a, you're, a, you're a good man. <laughs> um, you then broke his heart, obviously. Yeah. So you so you then you go through that that high school. Um, period with Ateneo. Mm-hmm. Was it at this time that you really felt that your development accelerated? Yes, definitely. Cause, yeah. Um, I wasn't getting as um as much exposure. Like I ex- like like I said, uh, my first eleven side tournament was or my first eleven side match was a, was in high school, which shouldn't be the case. I should be learning how to play, um, even just no understanding the rules and the movement of the game mm-hmm. much earlier. Um, but. Uh, being able to play in Ateneo brought, uh, gave me a lot of exposure because everything that's happening in the football community is in Manila. Um, I mean, or at least um, most of it um, happens here in Manila. Yeah. So um, in terms of the exposure, in terms of the experience that I, I, I get, to, um, get to have compared to playing in Don Bosco, which is in Laguna, so it's in the province, um, I was able to, to progress and to, to get myself exposed to the best of the best here in um, the country because yeah. I, I think for me the cream of the crop comes from Manila. Yeah, and and how did you find that level at that point? So I'm assuming you're probably like 14, 15, 16 at this point. Twelve. Right? Well, 2010, joined 12. 12, 12. Yes. So and that's when you went went started off high school and started yes. playing 11 aside. Yes. At what point did you feel as though right this is I can feel that I am one of the strongest players in my age bracket at what point did you feel like your development had really accelerated to the point where you felt you were near the top top of the tree for your age category in my first year um it, it was my first game against la salle green hills and um i think i scored three goals in our finals and we won that game and then that same year we went to singapore and um in Singapore, I, I, I got the Golden Boot Award in the Singa Cup. And then um, that's where I kind of thought that, hey, maybe I can actually do something um, more with, with football. And, and, you, and so how old are you here? Four, 13, 13, 13 or 14. 14. Yeah. And, you, and you went to Singapore with who? With the school? With the school, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you felt like you could... Compete. Compete <laughs> yes. and progress. Yes. Because Singa Cup's a good, good tournament. Yes. There are a lot of good teams there. So is at this point, you, what was your mindset? Are you thinking about going pro? Are you thinking about I would like to play in college? What's the sort of the the long term goal at this point, or did you have one at all? Um, the direction at that point was just for me to um, be able to graduate in Ateneo, but at the same time being able to play football. Yeah. Um, so it was a balance between both opportunities to to study and to to play. And um, I saw Ateneo 
was one of the best, um, probably, um, school football teams that they had in Manila. So um, I think it was the best of both worlds for me. Yeah. But at that time, I wasn't really focused on getting a career uh, in football. No. No, not yet. So you're looking at it more as football being the vehicle to yeah. getting a good academic. Yes. Well, in high school, it was actually fun to play football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to now, now it's kind of grueling, you know? Yeah. It, it, uh, there's a dif- there's a different aura when it comes to training when you're in high school with all your friends and all your buddies. Yeah. You know, you, it, it's there's there's a difference. What is the difference? Oh, wh- like when you're when you, when you're with your good friends, there's a lot of time to laugh. Yeah. Here it's already serious. Like y- you can't make a mistake. You know, you don't want to make a mistake or you want to prove something to to the coaches. Or in high school, it was more it was just more relaxed. Like you can make yeah. a mistake. You're still learning anyways and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that is that a negative or positive? Oh, that's a positive thing. Yeah, I think, I think, um, for a high school student who is not serious about football, um, that that's a good thing. That um, there's you still actually enjoy the sport because it makes you want to come back to the field whenever yeah. you enjoy it. But um, from a perspective of a person who wants to take football seriously, there's no time to enjoy. You can enjoy outside of the field. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So that, that's that's something. That's a difference. Yeah, that's a difference. <laughs> okay, good. Now, I, I want to sort of fast forward a little bit because, like I said, I, I remember seeing you at 14, 15 years old. I felt at that time you you probably could have played professionally, mm-hmm. even at 14, 15. The, the UFL at the time was, was a good standard, yeah. but I even remember at Rocky, Nino, Carlitos Matai, yeah. uh, Paeng Sagawa, all these guys. Mm-hmm. I, I remember playing in the FA Charity Cup and I played all of them. Mm-hmm. I was the coach at the time, just on an interim basis. I think we were in between coaches, um, and I'm, I remember th- I remember throwing them in. I said, "Look, yeah. you can play." And they were playing against Phil James yeah. at 15, and I was like, you, know, "You were in that batch, and you definitely could have played." But what what made you decide to to pursue the UAP and specifically mm-hmm. Ateneo? What was it about the program that drew you to wanting to play? at the college level with with this with that school um it was more of just thinking about um the prestige of graduating from ateneo that for me for me it was just that idea it wasn't really me wanting to play college football Mm -hmm. but um it was an outlet for me to be able to study um really yes because i um i received a scholarship yeah and um that was the reason why i was able to study in ateneo so um my goal was to be able to play in for the for the college team to be able to study. So that was more of the route that I wanted to take. Yeah. Yeah. It was um but of course after my first after my first year, that's when I started thinking maybe football's okay. The road that I want to take. So I w- I wanna unpack that a little bit more. Okay. So you so you want so you saw it as a vehicle to pursue your academic yes, career. Yes. What did you have uh, uh, a diploma, a degree in mind. What What was your plans to major in a yeah, particular subject? I'm, I'm currently majoring in management right now. Okay, so if you weren't a footballer, what would you be or want to be? If I went into football, if you weren't, if, if you I, weren't, oh wow, oh I don't know. I can't. I can't even see myself no. sitting in an office. No, no, I can't. I, I can't. But you said you wanted to, to pursue it from an academic perspective, and yes. you said that there was a, there's a prestige attached yes. to graduating from 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 Ateneo. Yes. So did you just want to graduate and that was a that was a goal yes an achievement in and of itself yes yes rather than just ha- having a career just, in mind yeah, just knowing okay. that i had that in my back pocket yeah so it's a good school obviously yes. okay i was just wondering if there was like another side to you, you want to be uh no not really stockbroker or <laughs> lawyer or something <laughs> um, I, I, no. No, no 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 so you, you're studying management yes okay how did you find the balance between studying and playing football did you find that a difficult quite difficult yeah okay <laughs> it's it's um it takes a lot of dedication definitely um i know there are a lot of athletes who um prioritize one over the other yeah and um well that's all up to them um but um the way w- the way we do it um in ateneo is that um they take no they t- they don't look at um stars like you can be the best player but if you don't fulfill your academic priorities, they'll kick you out. So um, it was a hard lesson we all had to learn together. And um, so we'd have trainings probably in the morning and then we'd have to stay up for class and then we have gym in the afternoon. And then um, of course, when you come back, we still have to study, study late hours and then wake up in the morning and train again. Um, It was hard 
um, being able to to adjust to that system and being able to balance everything. Um, of course, because we had to focus on these two aspects, there's a lot of other sacrifices that had to be made, like um, trips with the family mm -hmm. or um, a social life, a, yeah. uh, well, a decent social life. Yeah. yeah. So, um, trade-offs, you know. Yeah. yeah. And any regrets with that? Because I know a lot of people, when they go into that college environment, it's like, I, I, I want to party. I want to. Yeah, yeah. I want to enjoy all yeah. the trappings that come with yes. with that college life. Mm -hmm. no. any, any any issues with that? No regrets. No? no regrets. You sound quite focused. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hungry. I I, I, <laughs> I I'm really I really want to play abroad. Yeah, that's the plan. And at what point did this become a realization? Because you said that okay, after my first year, you had a, good, you had a very good first year. Mm -hmm. You came off of that golden. Did you win the golden boot your first year? Second, yes. Yeah. So first year you were you were top scorer in in UAP. Yes. You gained a lot of notoriety as a freshman coming in and and basically lighting the league up. Um, you said at that point you realised okay maybe this is something that I wanna I wanna pursue. Mm -hmm. Um, what what did, how did you see that un, unraveling? Because I would assume this would have been two thousand and. 15. 15? Yes. So how did you see that at that particular moment in time? How did you see that playing out? Um, I saw that I can compete. Yeah. Even in my first year that I was able to um, to um, adjust to the playing style of college because football, high school and college football are very different. different. So um, I was able to adjust um, and Coach JB was there to to assist me and to, to help me figure out how to play um, the, co the right way in, for college football and then um, after my first year, um, knowing that I can actually compete, it kind of made me think about um, what's next or the, the next level that I wanted yeah. to take. And it's always been at the back of my mind. Yeah. Um, as, as offers came in, um, I'd even consult with my captains before I talked to Jaira, Jaira Rocha. And I just, I just asked him, like, I think there were a few times that we had a conversation where we were, we were just talking about... Um, stopping our college careers and um, pursuing professional football. Yeah. And um, I never had that push yet. There was no, there was no security in, in the offers that I, I, I were, that I was receiving um, to make me say, okay, let's let go of this and let's start this. Yeah. And um, it just came recently. Yeah. Sorry for banging the table. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what offers did you have? During that college college time, uh, Davo Agalas was one. Yeah, yeah, they. I remember that rumor circulating. Yeah. I was upset. <laughs> I was upset. I was thinking that could be good signing. <laughs> I don't know if it was an offer, but you were talking to me about Kaya. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was through my agent Nina <laughs> Herrera, who we really discussed. Yeah, yeah. Um, aside from that, uh, that was pretty much it. Well, Coach Scott offered offered me to um, focus on getting bigger so that yeah. we can um, start playing abroad. Yeah. Yeah, because I think we discussed this, Jing and I, and exactly what you said there. One of the problems I have for a lot of the college players is you you have to forego so much yes. if you want to pursue that yeah. pro career. And obviously looking at the domestic game as mm -hmm. it is, and even when I was talking to you, I, I, I couldn't offer you like a huge sum of money yeah we couldn't offer you anything really other than can you, do you want to come and train with us and yes. potentially play with us on yeah. on occasions yeah. that, that was really the full extent of it because mm -hmm. um obviously there are rules and regulations that stipulate that you can't be a professional player you need to remain um an amateur amateur status yeah. that's, that's, to, that's to stay um stay intact so that creates this sort of void for players especially in your scenario mm -hmm. where no, no disrespect to anyone else, but you're probably too good to play at that level. Mm -hmm. But the opportunity outside of that is not good enough to leave what you've got. Yes. Because ultimately, you're, exactly what you said, you're there to, 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 get, my degree. to get your degree. Yes. And then football is the, uh, is the vehicle that's enabled you to get that on a, on a scholarship. Yes. Which is fantastic for you, great mm -hmm. for your family, yeah. so on and so forth. Is this a problem? I, I, I want to just talk to you with... with with this particular subject, because I'm, I'm guessing you said about Rocha having the same problem. I, and I'm guessing there's guys in Ateneo or FEU or these other schools mm -hmm. that are also experiencing yes. the, 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 same, the same issues. Mm -hmm. How do you think it's, it's potentially stunted the development of players in your situation yeah. 
And then do, do you feel it has also impacted on, on a broader scale, say, for example, at the SEA Games level? Yeah. I know it has impacted um, very much. Um, I've been thinking about it for the longest time, and I understand um, where um, the conflict um, resides or where the, where the problem resides. It's actually um, the culture of um, our of the Philippines, wherein um, the only way to get a good job here in the Philippines is to is a, getting a college degree. Mm -hmm. And um, you have a lot of players um, who are younger than me that have decided to not pursue college and continue to play pro, which at an early age is the best opportunity for you to, to progress because um, getting a pro career at such a young age, you, you, you're able to develop um, faster or at least um, better compared to a lot of um, the guys who are in my age but are still playing in the college level. So I think I think that's that's the that, that was the biggest problem it's just the whole culture of having to get a college degree. Yeah. Yeah. In in retrospect do you wish you'd have gone pro earlier? If you could do it all again. No. 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 Why not? Um I think this is the right time for me. Yeah. I think um I've maxed out the development I needed and the development that has been given to me or the um the opportunity and um, I've maxed out everything that I had to learn in college. Um, I think um, this was the best time for me to to take the leap. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would have been as prepared or di as as um, uh, how do you, I, I wouldn't have wanted it as much as I want it now. Right. I think my mindset would have been in a different place. Right. Should I uh, if I jumped. Um, or if I took that next step um, earlier. Earlier. Yeah. Okay. I I had this conversation with Jing, and Jing was of the opinion that he, we should be p trying to push more guys into yeah. the program earlier. Yeah. Um, for exactly the same reason as what you said. He said, mm -hmm. look, you know, the, these guys are coming in. They looked at like Sea Games, for example, mm -hmm. and gave the example of a Japanese guy who's just been signed by Kaya. He's you know, he's played in Japan, he played in Singapore, he's now come here, he's he's 22, I think, 23. Mm -hmm. And he was saying like, look, just his, his, his footballing IQ is much higher than a player of the same age, yeah. so on and so forth. And I said, uh, I said, I disagree. And the reason being is, I think that's a hell of a decision to make when you've got so much riding on, like you said, the culture that you have here, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is get a degree. Mm -hmm will equate to potentially getting a better job. Yeah. Um, you've, you've managed to get a, on a scholarship, which is great. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you get to perform for your family's yes. alma mater, which yes. in itself is a, is a, is a great achievement. Um, and the league is on such an uneven footing here. Mm -hmm. You know, for you to go in and say, right, I want to put all my eggs in Davao Aguilas, mm -hmm. for example, a yeah. club who you said had recruited you. Yes. You would have found yourself without a contract a year later. Yeah. I know. Right? And, and <laughs> think about that. Yeah. You know, like, it's all well and good us saying, oh, yeah, look, we, we would love to have uh, you come and play in our pro league. But if clubs are folding left, right, and center, yeah. it, it's a very, it's a very difficult landmine, landfill, yeah. uh, to give tumultuous up yeah. landscape for everyone to try to navigate. So in retrospect, imagine if you'd have forego, forego, forego uh, sorry, to forego, Two years. Yes. That would have been you trying to pay for your own academic uh, a, career, yeah. you know, for, for two years, uh, having been cut off from a club that, that you felt yeah. would have been, you know, as secure as any of the other clubs that were in the league at the time. That was a big factor for me as well. Um, the stability of the league. Yeah. Um, to be able to um, forgo my college career for um, a local um, professional club. Yeah. Um, that was one of um, my worries um, when if I'd ever sacrifice playing amateur for pro because uh, I knew that um, even if I wasn't getting the, the, the prime um, opportunity or the prime exposure, um, I'd still get some exposure playing in a club or playing in a league that I knew that I knew that was going to be there yeah. and that I know that is going to be competitive. Yep. In a sense that it's school pride, so everybody's going to be fighting for for the championship. And um, ultimately, that was the biggest worry for me, just the stability of the league. Yeah. 
And I think if you look at it now, um, there, there were obviously some guys who you know, um, Marco, for example, mm -hmm. uh, signed, signed for Dava, Dava Aguilas. Um, but you were able to build your, boost your profile. Yeah. Albeit at a lower, lower mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of led you to be propelled into the Ascal setup because really you sort of bypassed the whole league system, <laughs> you know, and found yourself called up to the national team mm -hmm. in um, 2018. Yes. So, you know, I, again, I had this argument with, with Jing. I've had this argument with other, other people. I, I don't think it's as clear cut as, as people make out this mm -hmm. whole college versus pro mm -hmm. type. I mean, if it was in the UK, if this was in Germany or Spain or somewhere, I would say, look, okay, the rewards for making it are so high. A lot of these clubs now will look after you academically in case yeah. you do fall by the wayside. Yeah. Um, because there's no way Davao Aguilar is going to pay for your school. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's, if, if, you know if they fall, they're not going to say, oh, let me help you through your school. For mm -hmm. They're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. So I fully understand why you made that decision. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the right one. I think it was the right one. Um, for me, I just, I, I, I was... I, I always talk about how I, I wish that the two parties could work together yeah. because this whole amateur status thing is is BS really. Yes. It, it doesn't help anyone. Yeah. It's a great pathway for all these kids to develop and get yes. a degree. But there are kids like you, the top sort of four or five percent who are able to play professional football. You could have played at 15, 16. I already said at the top of the, top of the interview. So why not find an avenue where you could do both? Yes. Yeah, you know that that's really. I look at like Nano Amita, for example. Like he should have been playing pro football at fifteen, yeah. sixteen. Uh, Amani came to the to the game a little bit later, mm -hmm. but he was already physically capable at yeah. seventeen years old yeah. to play men's football. Yeah. So, you know, I I wish that the the governing bodies could come together to to find a loophole to help out the next Harvey Gayoso who's coming <laughs> through the system. Otherwise, yeah. it, it's just going to be a problem that will perpetuate and and yeah. will spread out for, for far long and be drawn out for far longer than it needs to yeah, be yeah. you know and we're gonna and players are gonna unfortunately have to choose between whether they go pro yes. or stay in yeah in which case nobody really wins yes i think it's very hard to win um so yeah i i think you made the right choice thank and you I, and, I, and i don't know who advised you maybe uncle alvin has said a few <laughs> things but i think whoever was giving you advice or if you, you this is the conclusion that you came to yourself i think i me personally, I think it was the right decision. And if, if you were my son in the same situation, I'd probably say the same. Thank you very much. So um, that leads me sort of on to that ASCAL's 2018 mm -hmm. period. Because you really, on the surface, you came out of nowhere. You know, I was, I was part of the coaching staff and your mm -hmm. name had been banded about for, for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and that was off the back of an electric year for you. Yeah. Um, Another golden boot winning season for you. Um, did you win the title that year? 2018. No. No. 2019, you won it, right? 17 and 19. No, 17, 17 and 19. So that was the year that you didn't win it. But you had a great season. You had a banner season. Um, and your name was always sort of been pushed into that into that um, arena. You went to Bangladesh. Yes. Which was your first... Debut. Uh, de de yeah. Obviously, it, for those who don't remember, it was like a unofficial official. Yeah um national team yes. game but that was your first exposure to the national yes. setup yes H how did you find that experience over in bangladesh it was good um uh i was i was excited i was willing to take uh, to step up and to to take the to take the role that i was given and um i was proud um, to represent the country of course and um i actually got the goal so debut yes debut goal yeah D this describe that moment oh wow um all I wanted to do was be able to help the team. I yeah. didn't really expect anything. Uh, um, of course, I, being being a winger, um, that was my goal to score also. Yeah. And when when Pika when Pika gave that that ball, um, he gave it from the left wing. Um, my first instinct was just oh, just get your body in there and yeah. head that ball. And yeah. Wow! When I saw the ball go into the net, I yeah. celebrated like this. Yeah. No tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I remember the. I remember the game. I think the national team also had a camp uh, um, elsewhere. So we'd all, all already organized this particular friendly, but you couldn't play two games on the same day or simultaneously. So we, we, we had to sort of put out two squads, basically. Mm -hmm. So this was more um, sort of 
players who were in the mix potentially being considered for the national team mm-hmm. while the the main group was in Qatar was it was in Qatar and um you, you you sort of rose to prominence in that competition um there was a handful of other more experienced players mm-hmm. who probably went in there thinking that oh this is my opportunity to showcase myself and be pushed into the the Suzuki Cup reckoning mm-hmm. and then obviously the Asian Cup reckoning which mm-hmm. was going to happen in January um how how did you manage to force your way into that squad because you probably went in there as an outsider so so what was it that enabled you to again bypass so many more established more seasoned professional players and f- basically strong arm your way into the main squad i think i i took advantage of my youth <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um i used the fact that um because i was younger i I'd, I'd, i still had a lot of approval so um that's what i wanted to do mm-hmm. and um i kept fighting for um for a spot to be able to play i didn't want to just sit down and because um i left school for it um so i just didn't want to be able to leave school and um not do anything and um that pushed me in training that um i was uh, i was guided by a lot of players and a lot of coaching uh, coaches like uh, coach anto he was there yeah how was he how was he oh it's good in terms of your development um rival uh, coach yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, i i i i respect coach anto and um i take i take his opinions very um um very heavily so um it was an, it was a good experience for me yeah. and um i was just listening and i was just trying to learn um how to play because that was my first time so um it's good yeah yeah i, th- I think <laughs> you had a great tournament and off yeah. and off the back of that obviously they made the you made the semi finals we made the semi semi finals um lost to tajikistan tajikistan of our famous foes yeah. uh, tajikistan um and then you found yourself in the Suzuki Cup squad. Yeah, um, they called me. Up. They called. Yeah, you got yeah. you got called up. And, yes. and, and I guess I, again, I don't want to sort of dismiss that competition because that was your first full cap, and, and and obviously you got yeah. your your goal. But mm-hmm. um, in reality, that the the main squad was assembled for the Suzuki yes. Cup. How did you find? First of all, how did you find out that you were going to be in the squad? I'm always intrigued to find out how 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 you were informed. Um. Mom Ceres was the one who called me. Okay, your yeah. your unofficial agent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she she talked to me and she was like, "Oh, you you're gonna be called up for the Suzuki Cup." And then at first I couldn't believe it. Right. I was so surprised. And then um, I met up with Sir Dan, and then Sir Dan was just like, "Oh, you need to give everything when you get to um, Suzuki Cup." And I was like, "Yes, sir. I'll do whatever it takes." And then that's when I first met so, um, C- Coach Scott yeah. and um, Kiza and Coach Sven. Yeah. And oh, I also met, of course, Silla Kuyashraki and. Kiyamani. Yeah. So um, it was great to to, to meet them because you know I always looked up to them and I always aspired to them. So um, being able to play with them, I was so nervous. Yeah. Yeah, my heart was beating. Yeah. And of course you were there also. Um, it was different for me. I think I think um, a lot of the pressure was there, and um, I wasn't able to actually play the way that I wanted to play. No. No, I, what a bit too nervous. Yeah, I was a bit too nervous. Yeah, there. what was it that made you so nervous? You think? I don't know. I I was intimidated by all the guys. Yeah, I was very intimidated. Yeah, it's a different. It was a different aura playing there. Yeah. Um, what were the sort of things that you noticed were different compared to what you'd experienced either in the Bangladesh trip or even at the college level? <laughs> I don't want to say. Go on. <laughs> it's just like groups were you know we're, we're in the there were groups in the team yeah so it felt weird to be able to, to to be there in that environment yeah i think it must be really hard for a young player to come and try to integrate into that group yeah it was always different for me um when i first came in i had the likes of ali anton mm-hmm. um chad gould was in that was in that group so that was like our little safety net yeah of players we could sort of connect with yeah then you had the the college guys so um maybe like a kayla alvarez would be mm-hmm. in that group even maybe and and top was in that group mm-hmm. the sort of the more academic yeah. types yeah and then you had the, the armed forces guys yeah right so then that was that was a dynamic and although we, we were all fairly close you know socially you'd, you'd naturally gravitate yeah. to your own kind of group yes. 
national teams the same, right? So yeah. you've got these these little pockets of of you know, the, the German speaking guys, yes, you yes. Got, yeah, the, the more Spanish English, Spanish speaking guys, and so on and so forth. And you know what? It's the same at every club. Yeah, it's the same at every club. You mm-hmm. go to Liverpool, all the local guys are hanging yeah. out. The Brazilians, the Brazilians hang out. Yeah, so, yeah. so it is what it is. Yeah. Right? You got Paris Saint Germain. It's exactly the same, right? Yeah. So the Brazilian guys all hang out. Yeah, Prince, so on and so forth. And it must be quite intimidating, it I'd is. imagine, for, the, for for yourself or like a Marco to come in. It was. Um, but Marco's been there for a long time. So. Marco's been there for a long time. So, so I get that. But I, I can understand why it would be overwhelming for you. Um, but I never realized that it, it was, it was, you found it quite debilitating in yes. terms of how, how, how you... It was frustrating. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially because I was the new kid. I was a new guy. So nobody wanted... Nobody wanted to be pushed over by a new kid, of course. Yeah. And of course, when I'd make a mistake, um, it's different when yeah. a veteran makes a mistake. Oh yeah, he's fine. When a kid makes a mistake. You're, they're on you. And I don't even understand what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, in terms of the actual field of play though, so not, not necessarily socially, so you, you explain that's difficult, and that's difficult everywhere. And it's very difficult, no matter where you go. What did you notice in terms of the differences and nuances with the stuff that was going on on the field? In the Ascals, yeah, like with regards to the training, like how, how did, what did you see different? How did you, what, what did you like? What was there anything where you went made you go, wow, like the level is really good. Like yeah. I can't believe he can do this. Or yeah. I, he, he's a, he's able to do that. Like I've never seen that before. Yeah. Is there any of those sort of wow moments that that you encountered when you were in the training? There session? were a lot. The touches. Was it, most, was it mostly when I joined in? Was it mostly when I joined in? The <laughs> you, when you were there, yeah, 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 of yeah, course. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, yeah, but were there any moments where you were like, oh, wow, this, the level is significantly higher than, than what I've experienced before? Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, the, this is the ball movement. Yeah. Um, the touches of the guys, you can give a bad pass to him and he'll clean it up like it was nothing. Yeah. And then, of course, the finishing, I'm not used to. I, I don't want to sound un- um, mean, but I, I'm not used to just seeing everybody score. You know, take that out. Don't say that. <laughs> no, no, I, that. I, I, that. I, I know, I know exactly what you're saying. Fine. This is just you and me. Yeah, I'm, it, I'm not used to the, off the record. Yeah, it's you and me. I'm okay. just, I'm just not used to um, having anybody be in the spot and take the shot and score. Yeah, no, put that in. I'm saying, put it in. You're, you're just spot on. Like one of the things I I notice, and it's the thing that that separates. Uh, average players from good players, good players from great players, Mm -hmm. is that ability to finish inside the box. And it's not just, it's everyone. Like I remember, for example, I would go from a Kaya session Mm -hmm. and I would do it and we would do a finishing, let's say edge of the box. And you might score three out of 10. They're they're scoring eight out of 10. Yeah. You know, and and if you go into like Premier League level club or, you know, top level national team, you know, everything's going in. Yeah. Everything's going in. And you, I, I remember looking at it and I'm, I remember doing finishing sessions. You probably would have been part of them. So I used to like doing finishing sessions mm-hmm. after, after this. Yeah. And, you know, the goalkeepers, like they're pulling out saves from from nowhere. Yeah. You know, so even even shots that you're taking, you're yeah. thinking, oh, that's going in. Yeah. Oh, my God. Falcons guard has just saved that from absolutely out yeah. of nowhere. Yeah. You know, so all of these things, I think uh, they are those sort of mm-hmm. eye opening moments. Yeah. Um, oh, that was another one for me also as a winger. Um, so naturally, the moment I I, um, I get the ball, usually I know where the keeper is, so I know where to put the ball. But it's different now. Yeah. With with these guys, oh, I couldn't. I could even find the smallest of spaces. Yeah. Yeah. But a good learning curve for you, yeah, obviously. Of course, yes. Obviously, um, you didn't play in the Suzuki Cup. Yeah. Um, but you obviously traveled with the squad, yes. um, were able to interact with the coaches, yes. jo- joined in the training sessions yes. and did, did, did all that kind of stuff. Um, how did it enable you to grow as, as a player? How did you, how did you find it, did you find it able to, for you to able to grow as a person? Yes. Like what, what were the sort of things that you were able to harness from that particular experience? I was definitely humbled by the experience. Really? I, um, it, that was when it made me realize that um, I could not compete. That's when I when I realized that I had so much to when I had so much to work on, and um, I was itching up in the stands watching mm-hmm. every single game. Yeah, um, I really wanted to play, and um, I really wanted to prove myself. But um, I understood that um, I had a long way to go, and yeah. I still had a lot to work on. That's why um, 
Scott and I, Coach Scott and I um, spoke to each other. And um, that's when he told me that he wanted me to um, take the next step and um, he wanted to develop me. So Did it knock your confidence a little bit? It did. It did. It did a bit. Yeah. yeah. But it seems to have sort of spurred you on a little bit as yeah. well. Yeah. I think that's something I, I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I just turn the emotion around, you know, look at it from a different perspective on instead of just grieving about oh i didn't get to play yeah. it's more of why didn't i get to play yeah um why did not what 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 did i um not bring to the table um compared to these guys and um that's how i wanted to that's how it pushed me towards um thinking about a pro career thinking about developing my game yeah because one of the things i've noticed about players who come through that college system is I, I don't think there's too much an opportunity to, to grow, to stretch, to yes. be really challenged, like really, yes. really, really, really limited, challenged. limited, basically. It's limited. Yeah. And my concern, let's say with someone like yourself, is is where are you going to get those real challenges? If you're scoring yeah. 50 goals, right, where are you really going to get those challenges? And that's when you find a lot of players will go into their comfort zone and where players will... I've been told that I'm bored. I look bored yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And I think it takes those moments of realization to mm -hmm. be like, I'm miles away. Yeah. And that's really where the true test of character comes in, which really is the differentiating factor between making it and not making it. And also it's, is, is the area where you are going to experience yeah. the growth. So I think although that you, you've experienced that, now is the time that we're going to see yeah. how you can take that type of, um, not setback, but that, that kind of challenge. Yes. To be like, right, well, that's where I need to, that's what the level I need to aspire to. Yes. Can you now get yourself to that, to that yes. point? And, and it seems as though the coaching staff are, are on board with trying to yeah. help you and assist you along that pathway. Yes, because I think I've showed potential as well in training. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think a lot of people are batting for you as well because they've seen you in their performances yeah. at the college level. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, other people have, have you know, commented on got the physical attributes for sure. Um, and now it's just a case of harnessing that yeah. and, and bringing it to the next level, yeah. which, which kind of neatly brings me on to the, the challenge that mm -hmm. you have now, yeah. which is going to be the ASCAL development squad. Yes. Under 23s. Mm -hmm. So what, what, for the listeners and for the viewers, um, can you explain like what the rationale is behind this particular squad? Like what, what are the, what are the goals of this particular group? Yeah. Um, so as it, as the name um, says it, it's the development for the ASCOS. Yeah. So um, they're looking for the next generation of ASCOS players, mm -hmm. um, basically with the Filipino passport and that can represent the country. So um, that's the goal of the league. We have a lot of Southeast Asian um, teams already doing that, like um, the Young Lions. Singapore, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that was what they wanted to 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 copy does the image that they wanted to have also for here mm -hmm. so it was a develop they want they wanted to have players um get into the development of a professional style coaching and um competition so um as we were speaking about the whole avenue for players to get college degrees and um to play professionally mm -hmm. um i think that was the first step that um the pff has done yep. for for um the youth players now are there other people in the same boat as you? Who, are there other players who are also dropping out of the college game in order to potentially play on, in, on this squad? There are a few. Yes. There's a couple. Yes. You're not going to name them, are you? You're going to let them make. You're going to let them make their own LeBron James type yeah, announcement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> but we can expect more players from the UAP. You think that will be in this particular squad? Um, as the UAP is about to start, I think. Probably, maybe after, after, after this. this. Yeah. yeah, so you think it might be something that will happen as, yes. as, we, as we move forward. And then I, my understanding is there are other players from, from abroad mm -hmm. who are eligible to play on this team that yes. are also going to be making their way yes. to, to the Philippines yes. to be playing on this team yes. regularly. These are guys who are looking for professional careers um, internationally yeah. and um, um, in countries like Thailand and... Yeah. and um, now Japan and Korea, who need um, three ASEAN um, caps yeah, yeah. or three international caps. Spots, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, that's why they're making their travels or their arrangements here in the Philippines so that they can be able to 
be part of the development of the ASCOS, get the caps, and then be yeah. able to play internationally. And then they're looking at it from a perspective of this will be a stepping stone to potentially playing in those. That's how we're all looking in at those it. leagues. Yes. Okay. And then also, I assume a stepping stone into the national team. Yes. Proper. Yes. Okay. Um, what are the plans for you? What are your aspirations? What are your goals for this season? And then what are your aspirations and goals? The only thing in my future? mind at the moment is playing abroad. Yeah. I I, I want to take my talents um, somewhere else. I want to experience playing international football. I think I've set myself locally um, already and um, I want to be able to grow as a player and start learning from... Um, the international scene yeah. of football. What is it? What is it about playing abroad that attracts you so much? There's more support. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, football is bigger there. Yeah. I think because basketball is such a big sport here in the Philippines, it's yeah. not going to be as um, progressive as um, countries like in Thailand, which only started their their tournaments. I mean, their league. It, I think it's a brand. It's it's pretty much a brand new league, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but yeah. it's growing because they love the sport so much. Yeah. So that's what I want to do. That's I want to be in a scene where football is like the number one sport. Yeah, yeah. Which unfortunately is not going to be the case here yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. But no, I'm really excited to see how how this team develops because I think that there's a lot of young, yeah, hot prospects that are that are out there yes. and that are looking to come back to the Philippines yes. and, and like I said use it as a, as a stepping stone but mm -hmm. I'm, i also think it's a great way to um increase the the level yeah of the league because obviously last year the level of the league i think was was subpar mm -hmm. um and if we can get some of these players either in your situation so your top standout performers from the uap mm -hmm. And he can also temper that with bringing in guys who are kind of on the cusp of yes. the national team looking to, okay, perform maybe f f three, four, five, six months, whatever, and then look to, to make the step to maybe a, a bigger league. Mm -hmm. I think that's only only going to be a positive for, for the domestic league. So um, I'm really excited for that. But the last thing I want to ask you is you're still going to finish off your degree, right? Yes. That's still a goal in mind. Because I think that's really important. Yes. And, and, and why... Why is it important for you? Because I know why, why I, I think it's important and I know why I, I, I would always recommend someone in your situation yeah. to, to do it. But yeah. why, why is it so important for you to finish your degree? It's because I worked hard for it. Um, I wasn't supposed to graduate in the Ateneo High School. Um, it's, it's been a long journey for me, especially because I wanted to prove that um, I can graduate in the Ateneo. And... Um, uh, I've just worked so hard on it, um, trying to stay into the school, um, that I wanted to be able to finish it off. Yeah. Um, I've spent most of my years in Ateneo, and um, what better way to to cap it off than you know to degree. have a degree? Yes. And I, I also know that football is not going to be forever. Yeah. So at least I have that in my back. And you have what, what, one year left of the course. One year. Are you going to get it done? Of course. You sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's been a real pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for having um, me. I, I want to be very mindful of your time because I know you actually have to shoot off the class. Yes, so I, do. um, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. But, um, you know, for, for all the listeners, all the viewers, um, I, I hope they really pay attention to um, how you struggled through your academic yeah. career and try to find the balance between that and football. Yeah. And even though you're trying to pursue your, 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 your dream of professional football, yeah. you've still maintained that long-term focus and, and given a lot of credence to making sure that you attain, obtain that, yes. that degree because I think that's a massive, massive um, thing for you, for, mm -hmm. for your family, and, mm -hmm. and it shows that you're willing to um, still persist with yes. obtaining that qualification yes. because in the long term, it's, it's, it's going to be really, really viable for you. Um, not many people have that mindset. And I think that's that's great testament to you, your upbringing, thank you, um, and and your determination, dogged determination to make sure you, <laughs> you see it through to the end. And if you have that type of application to your academic career, it's it's going to translate really, really well into hopefully a really long professional career. Thank so you. Um, again, Harvey, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for we, having me. We really course. appreciate it, and all the best with this season and beyond. Thank you, thank you very much. Cheers, Harvey. Thank you. 
Uh, if you like our content and if you enjoyed this episode, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, like us on Facebook and listen to us, download our episodes on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify.